To get the zombies inside the camp, the woman drove the car at full speed toward the gate. Maggie suffered multiple bruises from the fall, but kept her eyes fixed on the car. She wasn't disappointed the gate was successfully breached. Soon, the horde of zombies entered the camp. Despite the efforts of a few reapers at the entrance to resist the zombies, they couldn't halt the horde's advance. Pope, witnessing this, was infuriated and immediately ordered his men to launch the secret weapon. Leah rushes forward to stop them, because once fired, it will be an indiscriminate attack, and his own people will also die. But the old man had gone completely mad, believing that their sacrifice would be glorious. The men don't want to piss off the boss, so they have to light the fuse. Daryl had no intention of hiding any longer. This thing should never be lit. He has family members disguised as zombies mixed in. The sudden turn of events has left him in a state of panic. Daryl's knife pierces the man's chest, and he immediately rushes up and pulls out the man's knife and cuts the fuse. Meanwhile Maggie, who had crashed through the door, was hiding. Fortunately, the Reapers were too preoccupied with killing zombies to notice her. Suddenly, one of the Reapers spotted Maggie. She made the first move but was blocked by the Reaper and knocked to the ground by the man. Gabriel saves Maggie, and the valuables he finds are a sniper rifle. Maggie smiled appreciatively and stood up. The Reapers try to come after them but are dissuaded by the sniper rifle. On the rooftop, Pope was now on the brink of death. Leah walks over and crushes Pope under her feet. After giving Pope his final farewell, Leah glanced at the bodies of her fallen comrades, lost in thought. To outsiders, the Reapers might seem evil, but Leah had long regarded them as family. She saw them as brothers and sisters. Leah killed Pope to protect the innocent members below, and Daryl just killed a fellow man she considered family in a light-hearted manner, so she's not going back with this man. Leah told Daryl solemnly, you'd do anything for your family, and so would I. At this moment, the sound of footsteps could be heard echoing in the stairwell. Daryl understood that staying behind meant certain death. He took one last reluctant look at Leia and tumbled off the roof. Daryl had just left when Brandon and the other guy came up, and it was too late to catch up. Downstairs, Megan and Cole had brought more zombies inside the compound. Maggie once again rushed out to lend a hand. These individuals were truly remarkable, boasting extensive combat experience as former Special Forces operatives. At this moment, Leah's voice came through the walkie-talkie, ordering them to retreat immediately. The Reaper Scythe is about to be launched. Several of the Reapers quickly departed from the area. Megan was somewhat surprised by their sudden departure. Maggie, on the other hand, felt uneasy and sensed that something was amiss. She looked up and saw the woman watching them coldly. Meanwhile, the fuse on the Reaper Scythe car was rapidly burning down. They finally realized that something was terribly wrong. The Reaper Scythe car was flickering with fire and smoke. It was made on the same principle as a skyrocket. Maggie, they split up and took cover, it's a horrible thing, but if you're hit, you'll be blown to bits. One of the Reapers, who hadn't managed to retreat in time, found himself on the opposite side of Maggie. The enemies were extraordinarily angry at each other and a fierce fight immediately ensued. The man's strength was overwhelming. He effortlessly lifted Maggie with one hand and slammed her against the wall several times. Then, he pushed Maggie outside. Maggie fought desperately to break free. If this continued, she would be hit by the flames. She then focused her attacks on the man's weak points and gained the upper hand, ultimately pushing the Reaper outside. Immediately after, risking being hit by the flames, Maggie ran toward the direction of the main building because someone was chasing her. Once she reached the second floor, Maggie looked down and realized that the pursuer hadn't followed. She breathed a sigh of relief and gently closed the door. But then the sound of footsteps came from the corridor. Maggie was immediately on guard and ready to fight to the death. But she didn't realize that Negan and Cole were also hiding here. Maggie also noticed that Cole had an injured leg, and they needed to find a place to tend to his wounds. Shortly after, Maggie led the two of them to a room, which turned out to be a medical bay equipped with supplies like alcohol swabs. Maggie grabbed some supplies and then led them into a secret passage. This was all designed by them before. Even the Reapers didn't know about it. After securing the door, Megan inquired about their next steps. Just then, Brandon, who had been tracking Maggie, also arrived at their location. Carver, report. In the infirmary. The leader slipped me, but I'll get her. Just find her. Not one of them's getting out of here alive. Copy that.
The day was gradually breaking, and the Reapers had cleared out the zombies. Reclaiming the upper hand, some of the Reapers were patrolling the rooftop with their guns. Gabriel perceived he as a significant threat and decided to eliminate the one on the roof first. Taking advantage of the Reapers' diverted attention, Gabriel attempted to stealthily cross the courtyard and approach the main building. Unbeknownst to Gabriel, he had already been spotted. Just as Austin was about to pull the trigger, Daryl charged in from the side tackling him to the ground and using his fingers to block Austin from firing. After a brief struggle, the handgun was knocked out of their hands. They both instinctively drew their waist-mounted knives. It had to be said that despite their smaller numbers, the Reapers were undoubtedly not to be underestimated when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Daryl was overwhelmed in melee for a while, and even almost got killed a few times. Austin's knife Daryl with experience to barely block, and finally found an opportunity under the bitter support. Austin, in disbelief, stared at the blade in his abdomen, he desperately wanted to escape. Knowing that staying meant certain death, Daryl wasn't about to let him get away. He charged forward, pulling Austin back and wrapping his arm tightly around Austin's neck. Austin tried to struggle, but the wound in his abdomen made it difficult for him to exert force. At that moment, a nearby zombie was drawn to the commotion, banging on the door incessantly, but suddenly the zombies were shot in the head from the outside. It must be the other the Reapers who were attracted by the zombies. Daryl tightened his grip on Austin's mouth. Daryl's upping the ante again as he tries to make quick work of Austin. Daryl gently placed Austin on the ground before quickly grabbing his weapon. Just then, outside, someone shattered the glass and reached in. Opening the door, Leah was devastated. Too many of her friends had died in the last two days and she was furious. Leah then left the room. She wanted to kill those bastards. As they departed, Daryl pushed aside a blackboard. He hadn't had time to escape earlier, so he had to hide here. Meanwhile, Gabriel had finally made it inside the building. He intended to reach the top floor and take out the patrolling guard, or else none of them would make it out alive. However, as Gabriel entered a series of interconnected rooms on one floor, someone had been waiting for him all along. It's Father Mansea from the Reapers. Their encounter would lead to a very intriguing conversation. Gabriel was very surprised that the man actually put away his weapon. Gabriel bowed his head in shame. He was really getting far away from God. So he hesitated. However, moments later, Gabriel glanced towards the stairwell, gritting his teeth as if making a decision. Mansea was greatly taken aback. He had assumed that Gabriel had been swayed by his influence, but he never expected this man to ignore the guidance of God. I don't believe that. On the other side, Maggie was fleeing frantically down the corridor with Brandon in hot pursuit. After running for a while, the corridor had come to an end, and to her despair, there was not a single door that could be opened. Brandon, wearing a smug expression, taunted her, took a wrong turn, didn't you? You've run out of places to escape. No sooner had Brandon finished speaking than the door inside opened and Cole stepped out. Much to Brandon's surprise, at the same time, Megan emerged from behind Brandon, wielding a steel pipe as a weapon. It turns out that Maggie was intentionally discovered by Brandon, in order to lure him here and prepare to behead him here, but Brandon didn't panic at all. He even said it's good that I don't have to look for them one by one. Megan couldn't stand his arrogance and took the initiative to attack, swinging the pipe at Brandon, but to their surprise, Brandon easily tossed Negan aside with just a few moves. Cole also confronted Brandon, but he was quickly knocked to the ground in just three moves. Maggie even got a kick in the gut from Brandon. Seizing an opportunity, Negan struck Brandon in the abdomen with the pipe, but it only seemed to further ignite Brandon's fighting spirit. Brandon grabbed the pipe and gave them another lecture. Negan looked up at the sand in the room and had a plan. A direct confrontation with Brandon proved futile. Brandon was too powerful to be defeated head on. Brandon's blow left Maggie bleeding from her face, and her injuries were so severe that she couldn't fight back. At the critical moment, Negan managed to turn the game around by using his plan, otherwise they would all be accounted for here today. Maggie stood up with difficulty, just now that hit directly to her confused. She looked at Negan and although she said nothing, there was a sense of recognition that wasn't there before. Maggie then handed her weapon to Cole, indicating that he should avenge his sister, but Cole handed the weapon back to Maggie, he wanted Maggie to do it for him. Meanwhile, Brandon was showing signs of regaining consciousness. Maggie steps closer to Brandon and raises her scythe to Brandon's head. Daryl tells them that now is not the time to kill Brandon, if we want to make it out of here alive, we need this guy as a hostage, he said. Do what we want. And go home. I promise. Leah. It's me. 
We need to talk. <laughs>